Hey guys, this is XJCSX coming at you with part 3 of my event editing tutorial for Final Fantasy 6. Now before I get started, I want to point out that I'm going to split um, part 3 into uh, what we're going to call it alphabetical order. I'm going to have part 3A, part 3B, and part 3C, and I don't really know how long it's going to go guys. But the reason for that being is because I don't want to um, get a 30 minute long video and have to decode it and make it smaller and then upload it on a website for like 2 hours. So yeah, that's kind of what happened in the first part 3, so yeah, if you were wondering. So yeah guys, that's that and I'm just gonna get started right now and if you haven't already um open up Winhex and it should be right mine right here and first things first you know open up your clean ROM oops I was just in there uh right here wait where are you be here we go right here here's my clean ROM and I just wanted to show you guys how you can make text display in various formats okay now you might not know but in the uh I don't know what to call it the game it uh executes stuff let me get to the part of the game. We're going to be editing the part again of called There's the Town where, you know, Biggs and Wedge are in the Russia Cliffs, okay? Uh, we will, we're going to make it where they, uh, the text, okay? The text appears with this command called 4B. 4B is saying display text, okay? And the byte that follows is the text ID number and located in the ROM, okay? So there's actually the third byte, the high byte, I guess you could say, um, is the flag that determines if the text is going to be displayed in a text box or if there's not going to be a text box at all or if it's going to be on the bottom of the screen, okay? Or if it's going to be on top. I think if you just, I'll, I'll get into all that later, okay, guys? But first of all, let's get to it real quick and, you know, just copy it. Uh, I'm sorry, guys, my copying skills aren't working so great. And paste it. Ooh, I got two C's at the time. See, better go up twice. Type 4B, display text, 01. The reason I put 01 is because this is actually the hexadecimal ID for that text, which is 1. So, you know how some things have the hexadecimal equivalent in the uh, event script and some things don't? Well, this is one of those things that does have the hexadecimal equivalent. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. So, 4B01, and uh, yeah, we'll do that. 4B0100. Okay, that it says display text. Um, 01, okay? And then the byte that follows, the 00, zero right here, is the flag. That's the flag right there, guys. It's saying display in the text box. It is not saying display, it is not saying begin action queue for character 00. zero. I think the reason for that being, and I'm really not, you know, good with this stuff, but they hard code certain, um, bytes to the game to where if it, like, if they, if 00, zero appears after 4B and whatever byte, it means to display it's a flag, okay, basically, you don't, you don't have to know any of that, okay, but this is the flag that's telling the game to make it, uh, that text appear in a text box, okay, so we're gonna change it, and the text, um, the ID that you can replace to make it not have any text, but to not have a text box is 40, simple as that, uh, 40, you know, display text, 01, 40, and let me see how we're doing the time, okay, two, yeah, we got plenty of time, uh, let me minimize, okay, so 4B, uh, where'd it go? Oh, right here, 4B40. Okay, save, save ROM, and we're gonna load up the game to see if we see any differences. Okay. Wait, what am I doing? I can't get on my ZSNS saves organized. Here we go, right here. There's the town, and as you can see, there is no text uh, text box right there. If we change it back to zero zero, there will be a text box. So that's basically that flag. Okay. Now another thing that I'm going to get onto um with your um later on later on like I probably part four of this video I'm not sure, part four of my series okay uh, I'm going to just show you how you can kind of like reroute certain text and all that whenever you get into a custom event building because you'll see how useful it really is I'm going to change that back to zero zero and yeah that's that okay look back in the um wait don't look back this is me uh how to fade or play a song or sound effect okay I know I went over um how to play songs and all that in my first part but I want to see the, the fade in command and I'm not really going to go over it really but the fade these are the uh song commands Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and write them out. There's F0, and then there's F1, and then there's F4. Let me go ahead and write that. F0, F1, and F4. F4, wait, not 54. F4. F0 is saying play song, okay? There's no pause, no break, no fade in. It's just pure and simple, sweet. It just plays the song. Bam, instantly. That's the song, okay? F1 is kind of like the opposite. It fades in the song at a low volume and grabs it gets higher, and you know, that's a fade in, okay? And F4 is play sound effect, okay? So whenever you type F4, and really all these commands, they await a high byte. And this is one of those high byte commands that needs a high byte. So you type F4, the byte that follows is going to be the sound effects ID for F1, and F0 is going to be the sound effects ID that follows that byte. 
just want to clear that up, you know, just so you know everything involved in this. We already covered that and I think part two of my event editing tutorial. Could have been part one, I can't remember guys, but yeah, that's that. Okay, now we're gonna get to the nitty gritty probably of this entire thing. I wanna check my time real quick. You'd be surprised how hard it is to make a video short. Okay. Um, how to place a character or NPC on a different part of the map, okay? This might not sound like much, but this is actually a very, very, very useful skill when it comes to a custom event building, okay? We're gonna edit the, um, part in our show where you walk up and you walk on an event square, which I'm gonna explain very shortly. Whenever you walk there, you know how those two guards appear and they say, Imperial Magitech armor, not even Narshe safe anymore. And then they attack you, they come down, and then they attack you from the sides. Well, we're going to edit that, and we're going to make them appear one from the top and one from the bottom, and they're going to come and corner you at an you know, angle, okay? I don't really know what the angle is. And it's going to be kind of like a corner, okay? And we're going to get into all that, and of course you have to place the characters at certain spots on the map, okay? Now, let's save the ROM real quick. Anyways, I want to first go over what an event square is, okay? Like, if you remember right, whenever you step on that one tile, you probably don't know the tile by the back of your head, but you know wherever you're walking in our show, and you walk on one of these tiles, and then all of a sudden, the, the, you know, you can't walk anymore, the scene shifts, and these two guards come down. That is an event square, and I'm going to show you what an event square looks like in the level editor, because it'll make way more sense in the level editor. And again, everything always makes way more sense in the level editor. Oh, it's already open. See? Okay. Loader on, and this is it right here. Levels, and it loads. Uh oh. Okay, I'm gonna pause the video real quick, guys. This is freaky. Okay, guys, I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, if you, I, uh, I think the reason that happened was because I did not expand that ROM or do anything safe to it. So yeah, that that will happen, guys. You know, um, just look online for help on that kind of stuff. But yeah, I'm using a different ROM, and it really does not matter right now because we're not doing anything in the level editor. Okay, so yeah, I've loaded up another clean ROM, kind of a clean ROM. It's pretty much clean as it gets. And we're only doing this so I can show you where an event square looks like, and so we can get some coordinates. Okay. So we go right here, and this is the map, you know. Make sure you're always in the right spot. Like this is saying, Narshe, outside, beginning. The beginning is the key word that you're looking for there. Okay, and now I'm not going to go over the entire level editor, of course, but you do need to know these buttons right here, because they're really helpful, actually, in event editing. Um, if you click this little green square right here, it will display all the events in the game. I mean, on this map. Okay. This right here is the event square I was talking about. Whenever you step right here, which is kind of hard to tell where you're stepping when you're on match deck armor, but whenever you step right here, the um the game pauses and that's an event square. And you can click events and it'll show you take you right where you're at. And this right here is the address to that event. So yeah, that's what an event square is. I wanted you to get a GUI visual image of all that, okay guys? So that's pretty cool. Now I'm just gonna leave this open because we're fixing to use it again. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you what happens. And I'm just gonna show you in game whenever you step on this event square. You step, bam. You can't move anymore. Okay, uh oh. Okay, I got all my ROMs mixed up. Sorry, guys. Let me pause the video and get them all organized. Okay, guys, I'm back again. And that should be the last time I have to pause the video. Let me check the time real quick. Okay, seven minutes. We're getting there. But, um, I'm going to show you real quick, um, what this event square looks like, okay? Ha I have my ROM in the wrong spot. I got to get more organized. But, anyways, here it is. Step right there, and that's what happens, okay, guys? You see how they come down and all that, and then they come down and they corner you, okay? And that was pretty cool, you know? But, I mean, just let's, let's change it up, okay? It's cool to change stuff up. Now, First of all, we need to go ahead and find the part of the event script, okay? And I'm going to use this one, actually. Let's search for the text that's nearest to this, okay? In this case, it's Imperial Magi Magitech Armor. Wait, I think I typed, yeah, Armor. And I'm going to put question mark. You don't want to type too much text because the event script was very, very, um, very detailed, actually. They have a lot of line breaks and everything, so they got it right on. Good job for them, kind of bad for us, but anyways. Um, this is right here, this is it right here, okay, guys? And actually, I'm going to show you what this is right here. You scroll up till you see this, okay? This right here is saying C0, which is the if command, I guess. Um, if this is set, all this stuff is set. This right here is basically an event square. It's set, it's asking the game if the character has stepped on this tile, or so, I think it's asking that. I'm not really sure, but I'm pretty sure it's, it's along the lines of that, okay, guys? So they're asking, like, if the character has stepped on this tile, branch to all this right here, okay, guys? And then it'll end with all this right here with FE return. So that means you're, you're in control of the character and all that stuff. But okay, this right here, this command right here, let me check the time one more time. Okay, this right here is saying 3D create object 10, and this one's saying 3D create object 11. Okay, this is like how you create um characters and NPCs to appear on a map, and how you can do anything with them. Like, let's say they did not, they did not have 3D create object 10, and they did not have 3D create object 11. What would happen is these action cues cannot execute that follow. Begin execute for character 10, and begin execute for character 11. The game would be like. 
Who's character 10? Who's character 11? The reason for that being is they're not created. Now, I also want to clear something else up that a lot of people have kind of been asking me or emailing me about. They've been saying, well, I create objects and I put them, I, I put them in the map or I create him, and, but he doesn't appear. You need to use the 41 command, and this isn't really going to be necessary for right now, but the 41 command is saying, show object 10, show object 11. Or, you know, you type 41, and then at the byte that follows that is going to be the byte ID that you just created, okay? So if we wanted to create an entirely new scene, like we want to have uh, Stellis appear, we would type 3D. 06, which is Stellis's ID, in most instances, and I'm going to explain why I just said most instances, and it's kind of really hard to say because I have braces, but if you type 3D06 and you wanted her to appear on the map, she would not. You would have to type 3D06, and then the bytes that follow, you would have to type um, begin action queue for character 06, you have to set her position to the pot spot on the map, and then you could type 41 show object uh, 06. So you would have created the object, you would have begun an action queue with her and placed her on the map, and then you would have used the 41 command that would display her. So that's kind of a general dumb rule that you want to know in that order, okay? But anyways, enough with that. We're just trying to get these guards to appear, one from the bottom, one from the top. Okay, let me check the time again. I am very picky. Okay, see, we reached our limit. Okay, um, stay tuned for part 3B. 3A. 3, oh yeah, yeah, 3B, 3B, this is 3A. Uh, see you guys.